In this week's episode of the Experimental Aircraft Channel, we head out to the Sewanee Bell Air Park to talk to Doug Libby about his breezy aircraft. I'm Doug Libby and uh, we're here looking at a breezy that I purchased a year ago from uh, someone in Pennsylvania uh, that found it had been sitting in a hangar for 20 years. I did a little reconstruction on it and here it is. It flies nice and uh, it's my wife's favorite aircraft. So. so so what condition was it when you actually found it and uh, reconditioned it? Oh, it just hadn't flown in a long time. The prop was all delaminated wood prop. Uh, the seats were all uh, rotted out just from sitting. It was hangered. Uh, but actually the wings, uh, the wing and tail had all just been covered before it went into, uh, into storage. So they're actually in very good shape. Yeah, they're all uh, polyfiber. And uh, the engine uh, just had to go through, through it. Put a new prop on it, new seats. and. You could see the inner tubes through the cracks in the tires. <laughs> it's just typical, you know, barn barn job. So, what was the uh, the airworthiness date on it? How old is it? Ah, uh, geez, off offhand, it's a s mid seventies. Okay. And being this is a chrome molly tube, did you have to do anything uh, internally to inspect the tubing for corrosion or anything? Or no, just uh, just from my experience and you know what I know about you know welding and whatever. It is actually built by a vocational school, but so some of the welds are different than others, but it, 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 it was done, uh, workmanship is good in it. Uh, you could see where they changed things along the line, did some gusseting and whatever. Uh, now th this was a plans built aircraft originally. Do you know, are the plans still available to build these? Oh yeah, yeah, I think if you, I think even on, uh, Aircraft Spruce, I think you can buy plans and a kit. And the kit just gives, they send you a bunch of chromoly tubing and start welding. Gotcha. Uh, everything's built from plans except uh, you buy the wing. I've seen them with Cesta 140 wings. Uh, I had one, uh, a Breezy that had a Luscombe wing. This is a Woodspar J5 wing. Uh, uh, the original one, I believe, was a J5 wing with the C90 motor. So this is pretty close to what the original design was. Okay, and what uh, you've explained to me, this is your favorite aircraft in your fleet that you fly. What, what is it about it that makes it your favorite and maybe describe like the speeds that you fly uh, at? Well, you know, you're not commuting in it, so you want to go as slow as possible. And you're sitting out there and I, you know, you don't have to wear a, uh, a helmet face shield or something like you would to go fast on a motorcycle. I can fly around with a, just a headset on. I have an intercom on it. And, uh, so it's uh, just nice cruiser. You can get down stall speeds about 35 mile an hour. So it's very enjoyable, a nice evening, go watch sunset. And uh, you can put two people on the back depending on the weight, <laughs> but uh, it's uh, just enjoyable, you know. And, and do you fly this primarily from the, the front seat or can you fly from either or? Uh, I've never, you know, that's a good question. Uh, I always fly it from the front seat solo, but you can, this, is, this particular one is uh, dual stick and rudder. Uh, my last one was a single yoke up front, so you only could fly from the front, so. Okay. But uh, this one here, at least, you know, somebody can control it from the back. It's got all dual controls, so. Nice, nice. And what, um, what other aircraft have you, um, is, this, is this your first experimental, or what other aircraft have you worked on in your past? Oh, this is actually, I think, my 15th aircraft. I've been flying about 35 years. And I started with one, I've had three 172s, and then I, I did, I had a midget Mustang experimental. Uh, a uh, couple of breezies. I've had three rotaway helicopters, and uh, so just a variety. I've had a couple of twin engine, well, one, one twin engine plane. I had an Aztec for a while. All right, uh, what's been on the record? Okay. 
Yeah, a little bumpy, huh? Hey guys, one second. Hey guys, you've probably seen me traveling a whole lot these days. What makes all this possible, getting this original aviation content, is sponsors like these. Dynon Avionics at DynonAvionics.com. Air Tech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com. Airworks at airworksaviation.com avionation at avionationusa.com check the description below for links to these great companies and visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics affiliate products aviation merchandise and so much more if you like these videos that we are producing weekly Give that like button a click and engage all notifications so you don't miss a single episode. So being that this is so exposed, I imagine you could practically do an annual every time you do a pre-flight, but what do you do for a pre-flight on this? Ah, that's the beauty of it. You can, you can see every pulley on it on your, uh, every pulley and heim joint is uh, exposed. So, you know, you don't have to take any panels and no panels take off. And uh, yeah, it's it makes it very nice. Uh, uh, you feel pretty secure that you know the plane's in top, you know, top shape. It's easy, easy to lubricate things that often don't get lubricated in a standard airplane. You know. So this is a still a mix of pulleys and push rod. Well, uh, yeah, all the tail here. This and they're they're, they're different. Uh, there's some variations the way got people do these. The last one I had was was uh, all cable for the elevator and it had no trim on it. You can see here, this is all heim joints and, and torque tubes. Yeah. So the last one, like I said, had pulleys and, uh, for the uh, elevator and, it, and this has a cable operated uh, trim tab on it. The last one I had didn't have a trim tab, with, so you all had to always have pressure on it. This here you can fly hands off, it trims up real nice. Gotcha. Well, being this is exposed a little bit more than most aircraft, do you have to lubricate anything more than you normally would because it either blows away or moisture or anything like that? Or Well, for one thing, you don't fly it in the rain as much as you would. <laughs> so, so you don't have to worry so much about stuff getting washed out. <laughs> right. But uh, no, it, it just makes it easy where, you, like I say, you wouldn't normally uh, lubricate things or have the uh, opportunity to get separate annual time. Where here, you, you can, you know, whenever he looks, you know, say, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll go over it, you know, and put a few drops of ACF 50 here and there. Yeah. So with the with the C90, which is approximately 90 horsepower, right? Yeah. Uh, what what kind of, um, how quickly can you get off the ground and what do you climb out with this? You know, I, I can't give you exact numbers. Uh, I just don't pay a whole lot of attention other than, you know, flying it by feel. Uh, the only number that I pay attention to are, is the airspeed, of course, you know, on, you know, landing and then like, like anything, you get used to it and you, you, know, you glance. Yeah, but, you, you uh, become one with this aircraft and... Yeah, yeah, it's very easy to fly. The first time I bought one, a guy, you know, and I didn't have dual control, I, he just said, go and fly, it's easy to fly. Just take off, uh, take off at 60 and fly around at 60 and land at 60. And basically, you know, it, it's a very, very safe if you do it that way. You can get a lot, you can get a lot slower, but that's a safe way of flying this thing. And it's a very, very easy to land. It lands with power on the mains, and as soon as you land, you chop the throttle. The front end goes bam on the ground, and it's you're there. It's uh, doesn't take much landing roll. It takes a little bit to get off the ground. You know, you've got to get the speed up with the 90, especially when you got 
you know, two or three people on this thing. Uh, but once it breaks ground and that nose comes up, it, it surprises you how it climbs, you know. And for those of you that are interested in possibly building this Breezy, as Doug mentioned earlier in the video, uh, Aircraft Spruce sells uh, different kits, and they still do. It's on their website. There's three different options for a materials kit. And I reached out to them just to make sure everything was up to date, and they said, uh, yes, in fact, if you order one of the materials kit, you will get a set of plans with that. So check it out if you're interested. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Experimental Aircraft Channel. Remember to check out our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com. We have merchandise. Check it out. Support the channel, like, subscribe, and click that bell so you don't miss a single episode.